Hey, what's up everyone? This is your boy Neil Gonzalez, Weather X45, and I would like to bring a topic update about Category 1 to 5 Hurricane. So, in that last previous video of what we did in our lesson is about notes of forms of hurricanes. Now, remember what we said that we had to have at least 85 degrees of water, ocean water, and we have to have at least 100% to 95% of moisture and have a warm front with it and an El Nino or also known as a La Nina which is stronger than an El Nino pockets of thunderstorms and moisture contribute like a cyclone and we have to have at least 100% of water vapor and 100% of condensation which automates a lot of low pressure along with the focal point of the storm so um, let's start with our lesson weather about Category 1 to Category 5 Hurricanes. Okay, so um, a Category 1 Hurricane, right? So I'm going to put Category 1 Hurricane. So a Category 1 Hurricane will be severe damage also, there could be um, storm surge, but mostly it's moderated to, at times, major. So, a Category 1 hurricane, it could bring moderated storm surge to major significant storm surge. So, um... Not just only it could cause severe damage for a Category 1 hurricane, but it could cause major debris. And also major outbreak power lines and tree limbs. So this is what we're going to put, that what I prefer, Category 1 Hurricane. So, and for a Category 1 Hurricane to hit in the area, you'll most likely to have severe damage, storm surge, moderated times to major, major debris, you'll have major outbreak of um, power lines and tree limbs. That's a Category 1 Hurricane. Now, a Category 2, so I'm going to put a Category 2. Category 2 Hurricane. Now, a Category 2 Hurricane will be severe outbreak damage. Which means that some rooftops, so I'm going to put a little parenthesis, some rooftops and tree limbs, especially power lines, power lines fall off. Now, um, for winds for a category two hurricane will be over ninety five to a hundred miles per hour. That's a Category 2 hurricane. Now for a Category 1 you have to have winds that are over 75 miles per hour to 85. That's a Category 1 hurricane. You have to have winds 75 and 85 miles per hour. That's a Category 1 hurricane. Now for a Category 2 hurricane it will be mostly 95 to 100, power, 100 mile per hour radius of strong gusty winds. Not just only that, it could cause significant Significant at times a outbreak of storm surge. So you have to have significant at times a outbreak storm surge. Just waves that are about 14 feet. So for a category two, you have to have 95 to 100 mile per hour gusty winds. That's a category two for, for a hurricane because 
When you, when you look at a category two, it's mostly strong debris, warm air and cold air contribute together with moisture and along a stalled front that comes along with the warm ocean water, which is 85 degrees, so it contribute all the ingredients together, which forms a hurricane, basically, which is known as an El Nino format, or you could call it a La Nina format. Now, it, um, now people want to know what's the difference between the El Nino and a La Nino. Um, a El Nino is basically a formation, accordingly to um, the Hurricane National Weather Service. They say that in order for form of a hurricane, you have to at least have an El Nino to form, which is pockets of thunderstorms and moisture and warm water vapor, a lot of condensation and a lot of tropical pockets of storms that form along the oceans from the coast, coastline areas like Mexico. Mexico had um, an El Nino and that formed strong winds and severe storms that came in the area. And also there was a storm, a hurricane, which was known as Patricia. Patricia actually hit Mexico at a Category 5 hurricane. So, um... That's the form of an El Nino. Now, La Nino is even worse because it's for more severe storms and deadly hurricanes. Now, let's start with a Category 3 hurricane. Um, let's put Category 3 hurricane. So, Category 3 hurricane. Okay, so now for a Category 3 hurricane, you have to have Rooftops that trip all that trip off moderately and to major. So a category three hurricane gets winds that's over 100 to 110 miles per hour, which is very strong, F strong force wind gusts that that could bring mostly major outbreaking surge from water, sea level, and and strong debris. Basically, strong debris is when like objects that fly around f just just jump around like Superman around the air and it's because of the winds that push out with force of moisture and strong winds and heavy rain that comes down hard and it's just like really bad and it just whips around like crazy because the eyes moving like this and when you get hit by the eye while the strongest winds are there so it's a lot of debris and a lot of outbreaks of damage rooftops could trip and um, houses could break off and there could be some peaks of buildings that could break off. Some bricks could fall off. So that's basically for a Category 3 hurricane. Now a Category 4 hurricane is bad. And the reason why it's bad... So let's start with a Category 4 hurricane. Okay guys, for a Category 4, hur uh, four hurricane, you had to have extreme damage. Like extreme damage. Millions of billions of dollar payment from tax of money for this damage for a category 4 hurricane even especially for a category 3 hurricane or and a 2 it, it mostly depends on how wide and how strong the hurricane could be if the eye is this is what people need to know if the eye is smaller in a hurricane that means you'll get very strong gusty extreme winds because it's so small that the winds are gonna go like this so if you're in the Iowa, you get like strong gusty force wind gust. And if it's bigger, the eye, then that means the winds are not as strong, but it's still like that. It's still debris. That'll be like a category two to like actually a one hurricane. Now for the winds for a category four hurricane, it'll be 110 miles per hour. To 118 miles per hour. That's a category 4 hurricane. That's bad. Intense of strong gusty winds. Also to 120 miles per hour. And that's even nearly close to a category 5. Extreme surge. Foot waves. 20 feet. Extreme waves. It's deadly. It's very deadly uh, water levels. Um, I want to tell you about water levels. It's basically, so let me show you. So, a category 1 hurricane for a water level will be like this up to here if I had a category 1 hurricane the water will be nearly like about a foot now for a category 2 it will go up here to my chest for a category 2 for feet of water of ocean water 
a category three will be up to my chin like this. A category four will be me underwater over. And then a category uh, four, it's like more underwater. And then a category five is like all the way up to my ceiling. That's how bad a category five hurricane is. And we're going to start about category five hurricanes. A category five hurricane will be winds over 120 miles per hour or even more to exclusively 200 miles per hour. That's a bang, bang of very strong gusty winds is over. Like what happened with Hurricane Katrina. Remember the time when New Orleans was completely devastated in August from 2005? That, that hurricane killed many lives. And it killed le many levees that was protecting the city from the, from the big, big water levels. And what happened was it broke off because of the strong, extreme intensity. It was so strong. The winds were punching it off. So all that wind was going like that. And what happens is it causes the levee to break off. And what happens is trees fall off. Debris gets deadly. Feet weighs over 20 feet. That's extremely dangerous because if you live in the eye wall and you get intense debris of strong winds that can just literally push you. Like think of it as a person pushing you. But it's actually like a metal part, like a person who has metal hands. It feels like strong weight and pushes you with force. That's how strong a Category 5 hurricane is. But it's even worse. It's like a car that mostly pushes you with force. That's how strong a Category 5 hurricane is. It really brings a lot of damage. Billions of dollars when Hurricane Katrina hit. Now, another hurricane that's really bad. Well, it was actually Category 1 which was Hurricane Sandy. Hurricane Sandy, when it hit in the Caribbean, it was a Category 2. And when it went to New York City, it was a Category 1. But even though it was a Category 1, it was still bad. Many, about 200 people died from Hurricane Sandy. And it hit on October 29. It was close to be as like the perfect storm that hit on that Halloween time in the 1990s. I forgot. Have you ever watched that movie, The Perfect Storm? That storm was over about a Category 3 to Category 5 storm because it was on the, the ocean. And and what's really weird about that per, that storm was, was it was along the ocean, the eye, and the storm was so wide that it actually hit couples of areas and it was completely devastated by debris and force of pressure along the houses and buildings from from the winds and in order to have that is you have to have at least amount of density of pressure from that wind that's whipping in there so if it's a, a hundred mile per hour wind will go like that just just think of it as a car going a racing car going fast that's how strong those wind gusts are a 200 mile per hour wind is like amount of pressure and what and all that pressure the wind is pushing from the house and then boom breaks off because of the amount of pressure and visibility and not just only that hurricanes can feel like it's a like an earthquake and the reasoning why is because when you feel pressure you feel like you feel like your whole house is shaking in the winds because the amount of pressure and density that can dent with those strong winds and the low pressure getting even lower, which makes it worse. And then when you get hit by the eye wall, debris comes along with that ingredient and it will cause completely severe damage. So that's why, that's why hurricanes are very bad at, at, at certain areas that are along with sea levels, with water, like Puerto Rico, the Caribbean, Florida. And the good thing about Florida is that it only got hit by one hurricane, which was Andrew. And I think another hurricane that was hit was Katrina. Florida got hit by Katrina, but it was only at a category... I believe it was a category one hurricane that hit on Florida. But when it hit on, um, when it hit on New Orleans, it was a category five. Devastating. Complete damage. So that's the different categories of hurricanes. When you look at hurricanes, remember... When you are expecting a hurricane to hit in your area, always prepare for it. And never look out the window during hurricanes. Because, what's the reasoning why? Because the wind can be so strong with the amount of density of pressure. And, and it will be so strong with the debris 
it would just shatter and the glass could actually hit your face and trees could fall on your face and that could cause death or injury. That's why you're not supposed to look out windows. You're supposed to take your head cover. Let's say, for example, a Category 4 hurricane was going to hit New York City, right? That will be 20 feet waves, right? And if you had strong debris, what you do is, if you're getting strong winds and it's coming towards you, what you do is you go a safe place that's more condensed, which means like it's more looped down where an area that's not in front of windows and glass and stuff like that. A strong area beneath ground and that will protect you from the amount of pressure because the winds basically whip around the area that's basically weakened by the building. So that's how you protect yourself during a hurricane. And hurricanes are very, very deadly. There are actually severe storms that actually cause billions of lives. It's, it's a very bad storm uh, of, according to scientists what are from hurricanes. Hope you guys like this video and peace out.